This is a third tutorial on doing cluster analysis in ArcGIS 10.2. In previous uh, tutorials, we looked at doing cluster analysis first with feature uh, features with attribute values, and then secondly with polygons with attribute values. And in fact, most of the, uh, well, all of the tools to do cluster analysis with an ArcGIS require that your features have attribute values because the cluster analysis essentially assesses the clustering of uh, features in terms of their distance from one another, variously defined, along with the attribute values, but you're looking for clusters of, uh, of, of features with similar attribute values. That's essentially what, you're, what it means to do a cluster analysis. But sometimes you're working with incident data, that is to say points of an occurrence or something, but there's no attribute value necessarily associated with that point. You're just interested in the very fact that the points occurred where they occurred, and you want to find out where there's a, a cluster of those points, where you have some kind of critical mass or density in those areas. And so in order to do that, it requires a slightly different process to use these tools. Well, it used to. There's now been, uh, in 10.2, there's a tool that allows you to kind of bypass a lot of the trouble of doing this, but essentially it follows a series of steps that I'm going to outline very quickly. So for this tutorial, we're going to be using, we're going to go back to map 9.1 to use that data to do this particular exercise. So I'm going to open up map 9.1, tutorial 9.1 rather, and we're going to be looking uh, again at the um, emergency calls to the uh, Fort Worth Area Fire Department. And we're interested in looking at these points and identifying where there are clusters or significant density of the points, ignoring, in this case, the attribute values that are associated with those points. Again, I'm going to switch to data view here so we can see the data a little more clearly. So here we've got all these points, and you can you can kind of see, or you can see visually, that there's some areas that appear to be um, denser. They have more points uh, in them, and some areas that obviously have very few. And that's fine, but again, the point density can also be a function of the way that you symbolize the points, you know, the size of the points, and and you can all. It might also be the case that you're not appreciating situations where there are multiple points that are occurring on top of one another, in which case the year. Uh, the sense of clustering visually will not uh, will not really reflect what's going on on the ground. So the cluster analysis seems to be a tool that should be appropriate for this kind of case. Well, when you do cluster analysis with incident points, again without attribute values, uh, you're going to have to follow a process. Um, the optimized hotspot analysis tool in the uh, mapping clusters tool set um, allows you to do this all in one at one time, which is very convenient. So before I um, open that up, I want to talk about what it does. So it essentially is going to calculate the local Geddes or GI star statistic again, but it's going to be doing it after it assesses, uh, or rather um, process the data to make it usable within, a, within the hotspot analysis. So essentially what happens with um, this optimized local hotspot tool, optimi optimized hotspot tool, is it does a few things. Now the first thing is it has to assess the the data to sure that there's enough features. You have to have at least 30 features for this process to work. And in addition, um, if there are values with it, this tool can also be used for attribute features that have attribute values. But in this case, we're not worried about that. Um, the the point where things change here is the issue of incident aggregation. So the hotspot analysis still needs to have attribute values that are associated with the features, but with incident data where you don't have those, the way that you get around that is you essentially aggregate the points, you collapse them uh, in some way in order to uh, create an attribute value which essentially is a count of the number of uh, points that occur within a short distance of each other or that fall within some kind of aggregating polygon. So there's a couple ways of handling this, uh, or rather three ways. Um, one way to do it is to essentially integrate the points first and what that means is that the points that are, let me just blow this up here, points that are near one another and you have to make a decision on the critical distance here essentially become uh, collapsed uh, or they're basically snapped together and then they are basically become fewer points but those points have a count of the number of points that, that, that were snapped together. So then that count of points becomes the attribute value that can be used for the hotspot analysis. So that's one approach. A, sec uh, a second approach is to use a second polygon layer and essentially 
sum up or aggregate the points by the polygons. You could do this by using a pre-existing polygon layer, say for example a census layer, a census track layer, or some other kind of polygon layer, or alternatively you could create a grid with what's in ArcGIS called a fishnet, uh, which essentially is a grid of polygon squares, and aggregate the data that way. Again, summing them up, summing up the points by the polygon boxes in which they fall. Either of those two cases uh, will essentially create a new feature class that has an attribute value which is a count of the number of points. Uh, and they have their advantages to them, but the, essentially all three of these instances or these um, methods will produce the same product in terms of a feature class with attribute values. Now after that happens, um, the process of analyzing your data in the optimized hotspot analysis tool is to then figure out what scale of analysis to use looking for that um, critical threshold distance around which to quali to uh, identify neighbors and neighborhoods in order to uh, calculate your uh, GI, uh, your GIS or GIS statistic. Um, so it runs the incremental spatial autocorrelation tool on the data and it uh, tries to identify the area of maximum spatial autocorrelation in your data set and when it finds that then it automatically uses that distance to, to uh, specify um, the neighborhood distance when it computes this, the, the, the statistic of interest. So that's, that's the process uh, that it goes through and essentially to, to uh, do this for you. So when we run the tool, the optimized hotspot analysis tool, uh, in the dialog that comes up, you're again specifying the input features. So calls for service is what we're interested in. It's going to create a new feature class, so we want to spe specify the out output of that. So in this case, we're going to say calls uh, opti hotspots. Right. You could call anything you want, but just something that would remind you about what you're dealing with. Now here, um, we could specify an analysis field and run it the same way we would run it with run, run the other um, uh, hotspot tools but we're not going to notice it says optional and when you don't specify an attribute uh, field it automatically assumes that you're working with incident data so then you have some other choices to make so uh, your choices here in terms of how to do the aggregation as I outlined before are to count incidents with a fishnet polygon you essentially create that grid of polygons to specify a layer, a polygon layer, again the census layer maybe, or alternatively to snap nearby instance points, so that's it where you collapse or integrate the points and then count up the number of points to create that attribute value. We'll start with the fishnet polygons for this instance. Um, lastly, we can specify a bounding polygon, essentially this kind of constrains the area of analysis so that it says we're looking to calculate the statistic within a particular area. In this case, Battalion 2 serves that function very nicely. It's essentially that polygon that we're looking at here, and that's going to be the area of interest that we're, we're analyzing. So with all these uh, parameters specified, we can hit OK. And it's going to run through that process again of um, generating a fishnet uh, polygon layer, and then it's going to do a spatial join between the fishnet polygon and the points in order to aggregate them or count them up by polygon and then it's going to run through and do that uh, incremental spatial autocorrelation to find the optimum distance at which to do the analysis and then voila you have your output. So what we're looking at here, let me turn this off for a second, is the output of this process and so essentially the hotspot analysis has been conducted on that fishnet uh, polygon layer that's been created here and the polygons themselves have been color-coded following that cold spot hot spot um, uh, uh, system that we looked at earlier so here we're seeing that the red areas represent hot spots or areas where you have uh, large numbers of points near other large numbers of points essentially so we have essentially high densities of um, points or calls nearby other high uh, densities of calls. So that's what that hotspot means. Uh, the uh, beige or pink areas in the surrounding area are not statistically significant, are not statistically significantly different from from a random distribution of points within this area. So they are not they're not uh, considered uh, 
hot or, hot or cold spots. There are no blue areas, so there are no apparent cold spots in this area. That is to say that there are no areas within our analysis area that um, that are significantly different from a random distribution in terms of a cold spot areas that have uh, far fewer than you would expect with a random distribution, which is significant because if you recall, by looking at the data, you know there seem to be holes in that. But but again, consider that if you were to take the same points and scatter them around the field or around this analysis area randomly numerous times, you could get all kinds of configurations. So this is not so uh, unusual that it actually qualifies as a cold spot. So that's kind of an interesting observation to pull away from here. Another way that you can uh, use this optimized hotspot tool in a way that's kind of interesting is to use its um, uh, parameter to create a density surface, which I think is kind of interesting. So rather than using the fishnet, we're going to do a density surface. But in order to do that, we need to make sure that our spatial analyst extension is turned on, because that's how it works. So if you want to make sure that it's on, so if you go to your Customize drop-down menu, and then go to the Extensions option, we can check to make sure that the appropriate extensions are on. So you want to make sure that Spatial Analyst is checked. So if it isn't, just check it off and then hit Close, and it'll, it'll be on, and that's all you need. Okay, so now we're going to run the Optimize Hotspot Analysis tool again. And we're going to put in most of the same parameters as we did before. Input features are the calls for service. Again, it's going to create an output feature class. Okay, so in this case, um, we'll call it uh, calls opti hotspots, and then I'll add uh, surface. Okay, that won't be the surface, but it'll be another uh, layer that we're working with here. So we're not specifying an analysis field again because we're going to work with the incident data. And this time, we're going to be choosing to snap nearby incidents to create a weighted points um, option. And when you choose that, it's going to give you the density surface as an optional output. You don't have to do that. It, would, it can do the analysis even without that. In fact, what it will do is it will create a point layer that looks just like the original, but they'll be color-coded. And we'll, we'll see both, both of those things. But we're going to create a density surface, so we're going to specify an output and again, I'm going to save it to my Esri Press folder. And so we're going to call this uh, calls February 07, because that's the original data, density surface. I'll just call it density, um, just to make it simple. So it's going to create a, 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 a raster when it does this, a raster surface. Uh, so when you're doing this, make sure that wherever you're saving it to, you're not burying it deep within uh, a deep folder structure that has, or particularly a folder structure that has um, spaces in the name. Um, this is a holdover in ESRI. So notice that in my path to that location that the names of these places, none of them have spaces in the name. Um, so I know a small thing, but it can actually mess up your analysis. All right, so here we go. We've got the data input. We've got the output feature class uh, name and location. We've chosen snap nearby incidents as the way that we're going to do the aggregation. And we're also uh, specifying a density surface output. So we'll hit OK. All right, here we go. Okay, so right off the bat, um, you should notice a few things. <laughs> the raster that's been created is is in a, a monochrome. It's black and white, right, running from dark to light. It exceeds the area of the um, uh, battalion uh, because we didn't get a chance to define the analysis zone. So it created a bounding area that matched the points, and if you can tell, the points that it considered uh, included those points that fall outside of the battalion zone. If you really didn't want it to do that, what you could do is you could uh, clip the point layer so that it falls just within the um, uh, zone or the polygon area that you're interested in, in analyzing. All right, so let's look at this in pieces. So um, let's look at the points first because I'd like to highlight that. So it created this new feature class, uh, point layer. And if, I'm going to alter the um, symbology here. I'm going to go into the property symbology, and I'm going to make all the uh, points a little larger so they're more visible. 
I'm going to double them in size. Okay. So what we have here are uh, points, and the points themselves have been classified. I'm turning off the calls again. Um, in terms of whether or not they constitute clusters of high density, in this case, clusters of incidents. So the darker red areas represent areas that um, are these collapsed points that represent uh, high densities that were statistically significantly different from a random assortment or, or, or um, arrangement of points in that area. So that's one way of looking at the data. Again, the light colored whitish beige pink color, whatever that is, those are not statistic statistically significant, so uh, we can ignore those. So that's one way of looking at the data, and that's one automatic output that gets produced out of this. The second one, of course, as you can see in the background, is this uh, density surface. So if we look at that, uh, the way that we interpret that is that the lighter colors all right, represent high values. So this is high density, um, and the darker the color, the lower the density. So uh, this one is mainly for visualization purposes. It's not going to be interpreted in the same way. It doesn't have a statistic to um, accompany it, so you're not really judging it in that way, but you are um, able to manipulate the symbology so that we can um, kind of visualize it in a way that you might call something akin to like a heat map, right? So um, well, that's the wrong one. I want that one. So we're looking for blue to red. Let's see if that one will do. Eh, that's not good. Let's just go with that one. Okay, there we go. We want to go from red, which corresponds to the high value, and then blue, which runs to the low value, and that's just to do something along this, this line. So the um, red areas obviously represent areas of, of a hot spot, and if you wanted to, you could overlay the points too, and they kind of echo that. Uh, but they represent just essentially a density surface. So the density surface is just a visualization. The points that have, were created in the collapsing, the integration, are really the output that communicate the statistically significant hot spots and cold spots in this particular case.